Today we're gonna make a planet in five minutes. Hey Shane! Donovan, I don't have time for this. I have only have five minutes to do this video. I want you to set me up on a date with Josephine. With Josephine, the mannequin. You want me to set you up on a date with a mannequin? Yes, but you don't have to say it like that. Well, that's weird. Uh, look, I don't have time for this. I, I have less than do five it, minutes. And I'll leave you alone. Okay, fine. Just do it. Do it. Okay, I'll do it. Just leave me alone. Uh, here's how to build a quick planet inside of After Effects. Here we go. I'm working from Premiere Pro and using the After Effects link, but you can just open After Effects if you want. So I drag a five second adjustment layer into Premiere and then choose Replace with After Effects Composition. Now, in After Effects, I delete the adjustment layer and import my planet image layer. The site I use for some great free planet images and textures is Solar System Scope. There's a link below, or you can just Google Solar System Scope and look under textures. They have real planets and some fictional planets, which is what I want to use for this tutorial. I download my texture and then import it into my composition. Next, I want to change my color bit depth to 16 under the project tab. You don't have to do this if it slows your down your computer too much, but it helps eliminate color banding in the gradients, so I like it. Now that I have my image in the composition, I can hide that layer and create a new solid and name it Planet. I drop in VC Orb, which is a free plugin from Video Copilot. I drop it into the Planet layer and then go into the Effects tab. Under the Maps dropdown in Diffuse Layer, we select our Planet Texture. Then we select the Bump Map Texture. You can use the same Planet image for the Bump Map, but if you have an actual Bump Map Texture for your Planet, import it and set your Bump Map to it. Now with our planet already looking pretty good, I create a new light and I set it to point light and I set my intensity to 125 and I put just a little bit of yellow tint to the light, not very much, just a tiny bit, and I click OK. Then I move the light off to the side far enough away from the planet that it lights up half of the sphere. You can move the light anywhere you want that looks good, it's your choice. This stupid thing, it's not even a real desk, it's a dresser and I can't slide my legs under it so it's, I'm really having to sit weird. Next, I want to go back to the planet layer and adjust the bump map settings. The bump map intensity will essentially set how high the mountains are on the planet, if you want to look at it that way. You'll see that there's a specular highlight on the planet, and for this tutorial, we're not using that, so go ahead and turn specular down to zero. And the bump fall off will set how far the shadow line will spread across those mountains. Be careful about setting the bump map intensity too high, sometimes less is better on this. I was pretty happy with about 0.05, but the bump map images will vary, and therefore so will this setting. I have a picture of the moon that I took a few nights ago that I can look at for a reference to get my adjustments to look just a little more realistic. Now I want to make my planet rotate a little bit through the clip, so I go to the first frame and in VC Orb I click the stopwatch and set a keyframe in rotation Y. Then I go to the last frame and adjust the rotation Y just a little bit. I set it to move about one degree per second. Now that I have my planet rotating the way I want, I'm going to select my planet layer and duplicate it. Next, I select my lower layer and rename it to Planet Glow. On this Planet Glow layer, I'm going to drop in the glow effect. You can use any glow effect, but I'm only using free plugins for this tutorial, so I'm going to use the glow effect that comes with After Effects. I adjust the threshold, radius, and intensity until I get a tiny amount of glow around the lit parts of the planet. Then I duplicate the glow layer because multiple glows seem to look a little better with this effect. I again play with the threshold, radius, and intensity until I get a nice subtle glow. I may be jumping back and forth between the first and second glow effect and continue tweaking these settings until I get what I really like. If you don't like the colors of the glow, you can go into both of your glow effects and change glow colors from original colors to A and B colors. And then you can even set color A and B if you want, but in this case I'll just stick with the white. The glow threshold will control how close to the shadow areas the glow will go. So I want to keep a little distance between the glow and the shaded areas of the planet. Now, if I solo the planet glow layer, you can see what I've done to that layer. I go ahead and unsolo it again so I can see all of my layers, and now we can make some adjustments so that the edge of the planet doesn't have such a harsh edge against the glow effect. We go to the planet layer, open up the VC Orb effects, and open up advanced options under the materials dropdown. When we adjust the edge feather, it will let a little bit of the glowing planet layer to wrap onto the regular planet layer. 
Now we'll go to the Planet Glow layer and open up the VC Orb Effects and again go to Materials and Advanced Options. When we increase the edge feather here, it will help the edge of the planet from being so harsh and there will be a slight fade into the glow area. After I play with the settings a little bit and get a nice edge that I like, the glow area and the edge feather should look pretty good no matter what angle I look at it from. Now I load a star image and put it into the background and I set it to be a 3D layer. When you change the stars to a 3D layer, you probably won't be able to see it anymore. What you need to do is go into the material options and down into accept lights and switch that to off and then you'll see them again. And now I have a quick planet that I can add a camera to and make a nice shot. Adding clouds can really take it to another level, but this tutorial is just for a quick planet. We have a tutorial coming up soon that will cover adding clouds and how to do a close flight to the planet and keep the detail from breaking down. Also, we'll make this photo into an After Effects scene. So click the subscribe button below and be sure to hit the bell icon so you can get a notification when that tutorial is released. It'll be coming out very soon. Again, thanks for supporting this channel and we will see you next time.